this is Terry from Easy Immune Health, and today we're going to be talking about how vitamin D we should be taking. Randomized controlled clinical trials have found that vitamin D supplements extend one's lifespan. That's great news, and it's what I've been saying for years. But what is the optimal dose, and what blood level is associated with living the longest? In this video series on vitamin D, we've noted that the relationship between vitamin D levels and mortality appears to be a U-shaped or a J-shaped curve. What this means is that low vitamin D levels were associated with increased mortality, but so were levels that were too high, with the apparent sweet spot around 75 or 80 nanomoles per liter, which also translates to around 30 to 32 nanograms per ml. Why might higher vitamin D levels be associated with higher risk? Well, these were population studies, so you can't really be sure which came first. It's possible that the higher vitamin D levels led to a higher risk, or maybe higher risk of certain individuals led to the vitamin, higher vitamin D levels. Maybe meaning those who weren't doing so well were prescribed vitamin D more often. Women, such as those with osteoporosis, tend to be very frail, and elderly people are often given vitamin D supplements. Again, the U-shaped or J-shaped curve. Could be that these were Scandinavian studies where they tend to take a lot of cod liver oil as a vitamin D supplement. Just one spoonful could have a tolerable upper, upper daily limit of intake for vitamin A, which could have negative consequences. And we've talked on our site about why we don't recommend taking cod liver oil supplements as a vitamin D supplement or an omega-3 fatty acid supplement. Anyway, the J-shaped and U-shaped curve is old data. An updated data has shown that as population vitamin D levels go up, mortality appears to go down and stay down. And this is really good news. So it's a safe dose that will likely get us to the purported optimal level of vitamin D? Well, Thousand units a day should get most people up to the target 75 nanomoles per liter, which is around 30 nanograms per mole. But by most people, they mean about 50%. To get to around 85% of the population, up to 75 would require 2,000 IUs a day. 2,000 international units a day would shift the curve here to here. That way we can take the average person into the desired range without fear of toxicity. You can take too much vitamin D, but you don't tend to see problems until blood levels get up to around 250, which would take consistent daily doses in excess of 10,000 IUs. However, I do find that the vast majority of people need even more than this, and I recommend taking upwards of 4,000 to 5,000 a day. Note that if you're overweight, you might want to take even more. If you're over age 70 and not getting enough sun, it may take 3,500 to 4,000 units to get that same 5% chance of bumping your levels past the target. 5,000 IUs is a very, very safe dose, and I find that this is a good recommended daily dose for the average person. There's no risk of toxicity with 5,000 IUs a day. And in fact, there's no risk of toxicity up to 10,000 IUs a day. But we don't recommend those higher dosages unless you're increasing your levels from a deficiency state. You can get toxicity, but it's very rare. Again, just staying at under 10,000 IUs a day is just fine. Okay, but then why did the Institute of Medicine set the recommended daily allowance for six to 800 units I use? In fact, official recommendations are all over the map, ranging from 200 a day all the way up to 10,000 a day. Well, we'll try to cut through the confusion next. However, we do recommend that everyone get a level, and we put optimal levels between 40 to 60 nanograms per mil, that's NG per ml, between 40 to 60 nanograms per ml. And if you can't get enough sun to do that, we do recommend that you take vitamin D. Do safe sun exposure 15 to 30 minutes a day without burning, wearing a hat to keep sun, to keep your skin from 
looking aged and for prevention of cataracts. But if you can't achieve between 40 to 60 nanograms per ml on a blood test, then we do recommend that you take good, high quality vitamin D supplement like Biotech. This is Carrie from Easy Immune Health. Thanks for